We're here with Dave Broman. He's the executive director of the Howard County Historical Society, which oversees the Cyberling Mansion. Dave, thank you so much for having us here today. Welcome to the Cyberling. What a beautiful house. Yes, absolutely. I'd like for you to give us an idea of sort of the historical significance of this mansion. You know, why is it here in the first place? It really goes back to the Indiana gas boom of the mid-1800s when they discovered natural mm -hmm. gas. And at that time, this was an agricultural community and they brought in industry because of the natural gas. They were giving away free gas to people who had come in and built factories. So one of the very first to use that on a large scale industrial manufacturing basis throughout Indiana was a guy named Monroe Cyberling. He came to Kokomo and built a couple of different factories. He had plenty of money, so he built this gorgeous house. Wonderful. And you know, the Historical Society, along with the county, has been restoring this mansion since about the 1970s. Give us an idea of what the restoration and the preservation um, of this beautiful house has been like. It's been an ongoing process. We've actually had to do it in a series of stages, which began around 1971, 72, with simply stabilizing the structure because it had been sitting empty for a few years and had unfortunately deteriorated quite a bit. So we just had to make sure the roof was intact and clean up some of the residue from the birds and the broken windows and things like that. And then we could begin to move the museum in. And then over the course of the next few years, we had a major renovation in 88. We had one about 2002, and uh, and then we the most recently we just did some uh, roof work. One really neat point in the mansion's past is that it actually used to house Indiana University Kokomo. Can you tell us a little bit about that? You bet. Um, the house was a residence for the Cyberling family for a few years before they moved on. They, they built this gorgeous house, in, uh, finished in 1891, and in 1895 they left. The GI Bill was expanding college enrollment across the country, and Indiana University in particular was growing by leaps and bounds and establishing branch campuses. Kokomo's enrollment had exploded, they needed more room, and the house was available. So they bought it from the estate of the previous owner, and they turned this into a university. Wow, what a neat opportunity for students. I can't imagine having class in some of these gorgeous rooms. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and they had classes, they had dances, they had sock hops, the uh, student union was in the basement of all places, and uh, it's kinda neat. After building this you know, beautiful house, the Cyberlings did not stay here very long. Why not? He was an industrial entrepreneur. He was a guy who built things. He uh, came from that background in Ohio in the Akron area. He came over here specifically to take advantage of the gas boom and build factories. So his glass company in Kokomo was taken over by a big syndicate from out east, and he moved on to Illinois to build several more factories in the Peoria and Ottawa. The mansion is kind of a mix of um, exhibits and sort of preservation, and it's open to the public, of course. Um, when people come here, what should they not miss? The woodwork is stunning, and I love watching people's mouths drop when they walk in the front door. The woodwork, the stained glass windows are absolutely gorgeous. The natural gas brought a lot of glass manufacturing to central Indiana, not just here, but in Madison County, you know, Elwood, Anderson, clear up to uh, Hartford City. Uh, one of the glass companies that came in was Kokomo Opalescent Glass, and they manufacture art glass, which is colored glass for stained glass windows. Uh, in fact, they manufactured quite a bit of glass for Tiffany and company. So they were here when Cyberling came making glass, and they made the glass and the windows for this beautiful mansion. We have a few windows that are, that are reproductions, but we actually have a number of original stained glass windows with that original opalescent glass in them. They're gorgeous. What exactly is the architectural style of this home? The official name is Neo-Jacobian Romanesque Revival. Now, I'm not an architect and can't talk a whole lot about that. It's primarily Romanesque revival, uh, which is characterized by the heavy stone blocks that are around the house. It gives it a really solid built feature feeling when you, when you look at the house. It's a big stone brick Romanesque. Well, in addition to being a lovely home, this is also a county museum with exhibits. Tell us about some of the exhibits that you'll find here. Well, we try to go through and explain the founding of the county and really focus on the gas boom history because that's what made 
Kokomo what it is today. So we have, in the inside the house, we have a mix of exhibits and period rooms to let people get an idea of what it was like to live here and then to also understand how the community came to be, how the county came to be what it is today. And as you mentioned before, at one point the house was in such disrepair that some might have wondered, why not just tear it down? Why save it? Why is this house important to Kokomo and maybe important to Indiana? It, obviously, it's an architectural beauty. It, it's just one of those iconic buildings that has come to stand for not only the commu this community, but this whole, this whole county. But beyond that, it has a tremendous symbolic value because it represents the huge change that made Kokomo the industrial town that it is. This building is at the core of why this town is what it is. We're certainly fortunate to have this wonderful home here as a peek into Indiana's past. Thank you, Dave, for giving us a tour um, of the home and its history. My pleasure. Thank you.